The topic is common mode current and chokes. What is common mode current and what can you do about it, which is a, a big topic. And what has been our experience with common mode current? Well, we've all heard it out of our PC speakers. As we're talking on the radio or the, uh, the hot mic, you don't want your lips to touch the mic. <laughs> As a young ham, I had exactly that experience, literally did not want my lips to touch the mic when I was talking because my, my shack was hot. I got a burn right across the back of my hand from the RF on one of my cables. So, but the thing that we have to remember is that this wah, wah, wah business that we hear in the speakers isn't necessarily because of common mode current. It can be, but it could also be just that your antenna is broadside to your speakers and it's getting a lot of RF off of your speakers and your speakers are picking it up. But nonetheless, let's talk about common mode current. In order for us to understand what's going on, we have to understand the terminology associated with it. What is common mode current? Now, Technically, the term refers back to what's called differential or balanced line. That's like our, we see the ladder line over on the right, that's, that is balanced, that's ladder line, or twisted pair data transmission lines. Well, what does that mean? It means that the voltage on one wire is going up while the voltage on the other wire is going down and vice versa. They're complementary. They're balanced voltages on these lines. That's how balanced lines work. That's how these differential data transmission lines work. Now, if the voltage is going in opposite directions, the current is going in opposite directions, right? But, what happens with common mode current and how is that related to this differential business? And you're saying in your head, well, we're talking about coax, aren't we? We'll get to coax. First, you have to understand what, what, common, what, what this is all about in, in technically correct terms. Well, common mode current means that there is a current that is common to both wires of a differential pair going in the same direction. And so the signal that is uh, on that, the current and the signal is varying around that current level. That's what common mode current is. Think of it, it's common to both conductors and it's going in the same direction. And in a similar sense, common mode voltage. Remember, you have your two conductors. They want to be going in opposite directions. Common mode voltage means that both conductors have a common voltage associated with them, and the signal is varying around that voltage. Now, that common mode voltage and common mode current doesn't have to be DC. We're probably thinking in our minds DC current but it could also be AC current, stuff that's being picked up the same on both wires. How does that work with coax? Well, to understand how it works with coax, we first have to understand that coax is not balanced, nor is it differential. You say, well, then how can you have common mode current? Well, it is a technically inaccurate use of the term common mode current. But because it describes a similar phenomenon and with similar outcomes, this term is used loosely to refer to what we call common mode current in our coaxial feed lines. Technically, it is an inaccurate use of the term but generally, it kind of describes a, an, a phenomenon that 
kind of sort of goes along with the other. So it kind of stuck. So where does common mode current flow in our coax? Some of you already know the answer to this question. So you have your coax. We have to talk about skin effect. RF energy does not use the entire conductor. You notice the center conductor of this hard line. It's hollow. You know why? Because the RF isn't going to flow there anyway. So why have the additional expense? Why have the additional weight associated with filling the center with something that's not going to be used for the transmission of the RF energy? The RF energy flows in the skin of the conductor. And the higher the, the frequency of the, the RF, the thinner that skin gets. So what does that have to do with common mode current as it relates to coax? Well, the question I ask, how many conductors does coax have? Our immediate answer, our knee-jerk answer is two. It's got a center conductor and it's got a shield. Done. And that is very true if we're talking about DC. But RF and skin effect, guess what? We got three. You go, how is that? Well, we got the outside skin of the inner conductor. We have the inside skin of the shield. And we have the outside skin of the shield. We have three conductors as far as RF is concerned. Crazy, huh? And what's even crazier is the inside skin of the shield and the outside skin of the shield act virtually independent of one another. That kind of blows our mind. So the nature of coaxial cable dictates that the current running through the center conductor is going to be the same as the current running on the inside skin of the shield. So if there's any difference at the load end of that between the currents, the current's got to go somewhere. So any current flowing on the outside skin of the shield is what we refer to as common mode current. That's where that difference current flows. Now one thing that we have to remember with coax, the shield is the ground reference. It's relatively unyielding, relatively speaking. Compared to the center conductor, it is relatively unyielding because it is ground reference. It is sort of kind of at a ground potential. So it's not actually moving like the center conductor is. But you can still have current flowing in a conductor that doesn't have potential movement in it. Now, there'll be potential drop because it has resistance and all of that kind of stuff, but current is going to be flowing in it. But it's not the same as the center conductor. It's, it gets too hairy the minute you try to parse it out too closely. So we'll just kind of leave it there. <laughs> so where does this current come from? There's actually several sources of common mode current. And the answer to that question will be found in the next video in this series. Thank you so much for watching. Until then, toodaloots.